Hey guys, today we are going to talk about Jace, Cunning Castaway. I wanted to save this for a video. So I didn't read anyone's opinions of him. I'm just going to make my own opinions of where his price will be heading. So they're saying foil copies are $60, regular copies are 20 What I like about him is he only costs one in double blue. This makes him playable in the older format. Right out of the box, he has an infinite combo with Doubling Season. Now, Doubling Season is great with any Planeswalker, but this one goes infinite because he can just, he doubles the loyalty counter. He comes in play with six. He can go ahead and create two tokens of himself, which then pop into play with six more. And then you kind of get the concept. And then using all the tokens of himself he can create infinite amount of illusion creatures and then have so you would have infinite amount of him and infinite amount of illusion creatures and then it would be difficult you would need to have an hour of devastation like effect and that would board wipe but your outs are not very unless you have that your outs are not that many idiots now simic is a very popular uh, deck type Doubling Season is a very popular card. It is not going to be uncommon to see these together in the EDH format. So he has a semi-home in EDH. He has, a, he has the ability to be modern playable. So you have 18 bucks for buy it now. You have $90 buy it now, free shipping. Pretty much around, let's call it, maybe if you get a great deal, $15. 15 to 20 dollars depending on how many you buy it's not a bad starting point i do feel like if this card goes down to five unlike dovian bond and other planeswalkers like kiara and most recently nissa it would be a very good buy i would feel very confident buying him around five and even i would feel confident trading for him at 10. I think he's a lot better, uh, and he's not getting the hype. And the big unknown here is what the print run will be. That's always unknown. We don't know what it is. My guess is Magic, it's not going to be as high. That would be my understanding of it. And this format will be incredibly casual. So even if it was high, the, the majority of players with the Jace would be at the kitchen table level. It wouldn't be... FNM has changed, right? FNM is no longer supposed to be highly competitive. That is for Saturday, right? Saturday game days and uh, the the pack days where you can get packs of booster packs. But at least my concept is Wizard Coast will shift to the majority of casual players where they believe their player base can grow. Uh, they are not targeting players who have ever played at GP. They're not targeting players who even ever played at FNM. They're trying to get new people to come in and learn the game. And that's how Magic can, has survived this long. It's because of new growth. The growth has stopped. And that creates a very interesting speculation environment. Because if you believe in the, that Magic will eventually recover from this, then this is the low point. This is the Shadow Moor, Eve Tide. And we know what those, oh, there's one, oh, Morning Tide, those, that entire block has done lower wind, that entire four, so it was two blocks, it was two and then two. That is probably the best time in Magic to have been play, playing because your commons, your uncommons, your bulk rares, your, so many of those cards in that time are valuable because there's not many of them. And that's the key to understand, there's not many of them. So RTR, or original Ravnica happened, people were really hyped. Then Shadowmoor happened and people were not hyped and people were leaving the game. Very, very similar to what they might do right now. That creates opportunity. Every time that you have an ebb and flow, RTR has been reprinted. The print run has to be enormous. I cannot imagine what it looks like on paper. In Battle for Zendikar with the Expeditions, people who normally bought Booster packs bought boxes. People who normally bought boxes bought cases. And 
it turned out not to be so good. So people are, it turned out not to be a great return on investment. Not many things in life are a great return on investment, to be frank with you. But when it's hyped, when people are uh, fighting each other to get these packs and opening them, I had a friend who had, he never buys a case of anything. Like he maybe buys a box at most, maybe a box and a half. But he went out and he bought 10 cases of Battle for Zendikar. He got slaughtered, right? People are not willing to do that again. But that creates opportunity for someone who is willing to do it. If you're going to take the risk, right? There's no reward if you don't take the risk. And all this like reserve list buyout stuff, there's not much risk involved. But I don't think the reward, I don't think it's easy as easy as to sell the card post spike as most people make it out to be. So Jace, I don't like him at $24. I don't like him at $84 a playset. I do like him at the $17. I do like him at the $15 range. And overall, I he, he has a home in EDH. He has an infinite combo. And on top of that, he should be relatively good in standard. From what I've seen, a free drop planeswalker yes there's more planeswalker removal now than there used to be but overall he just seems like a quality card he seems like something that will stand the test of time now would i buy him at 17 no i would not buy him at 17 but i feel like within a few days he's going to fall down to 10 and at 10 i would trade heavily into him and just gamble i would just everything that in mtg finance is a gamble because you don't know what the unless you're a big vendor and they tell you beforehand what's going to be in the next set and you got a god book the majority of people do not know what's coming next so this whole concept of mtg finance being like all these really smart analytical people that's not how mtg finance works because most of the cards that spike in price are because a new card has been printed or a commander wizard deck is now out there and now all the wizards are spiking in price right but did your statistics suggest that Wizards would be the one of the commander decks? No, but if you stole the deck list, you would be good to go, right? And then you would look like a genius. Just like the guy who had the dragon deck list. I'm sure he bought a lot of dragon cards. If he didn't, then he's an idiot, right? He had an entire deck list. He knew it was a five color dragons. He could literally look at the dragons out there. You know, look at the deck list. Look at what dragons were not on the deck list that were good and that were being played at a high percentage and then be like, okay, I need to buy these. Uh, and then leak the list a little later. Um, the same could be said with Ixalan. Ixalan, the legendary Jace role, has spiked a ton of cards. If you were the guy who stole the, uh, the rare mythic sheet, you would know it's real, right? You know where you stole it from. You stole it from a factory that sells real magic cards. And you know that these are legitimate. So you can make a ton of money, right? If you're like, huh, legendary planeswalkers. That probably means you can play multiple of them. What cards should I buy? Oh, Gideon? Okay, let me buy some Gideons. Gideon, the trial of whatever. Oh, okay, what else should I, what else should I buy? Oh, okay, maybe I'll buy some of these planeswalkers here. Some of these uh, planeswalkers. Uh, Sisse would be a good one, right? Because now you can search for legendary planeswalkers. Um, Reki, because now you can draw cards for planes, playing Planeswalkers, multiple ones in the same go. So, I mean, it would be so elementary, right? It would be so simple for you to connect the dots, because the only dot that was not connected was, hey, is this guy for real? Like, where did he steal this from? And all the pictures are all blurry. But if you were the one who stole it, you would know it's real, because you stole it from the factory, right? <laughs> like... Apparently, he stole multiple sheets of, like, he had the entire, like, he knew exactly, if you knew beforehand what was going to be printed in the next set, or what would, would be unbanned, or what would be reprinted, or what would not be reprinted, you look like a genius. And there are people, I think, in Star City Games, Channel Fireball, just people in large vendors that you, you see their buy list, and you see their behaviors, and it's very, unless they're, like, it's so easy. If a random person can walk into a random factory and take out a dragon deck for commander, the entire deck, apparently, 
right? He spoiled the entire deck, and we know that today. We know it's real, and it is exactly like he described it. Then, um, what cannot happen, right? What cannot happen? Anyway, that's it. Bye, guys.